Hello my friends, you're about to watch a live freight broker software demo that I did with Gerard from Quicker Than You Think Freight Brokerage. Now Gerard asked a lot of great questions that all freight brokers would want to know when they're shopping for TMS software. Let's have a look. So um, basically what I like to do is just take you through from the beginning, you know, like how you would first create a load. Like if you're coming into this from scratch, and all you want to do is generate a rate confirmation. Yes. This is the process I would go through, okay? Okay. All right. So, you know, when you log into your system, you're not going to have these loads, right? These are all the load board. This is your own company load board that you would have entered loads in already. And because Those are loads? Are it's loads, right? Yeah, these are all different loads. If I click on this is an active load, it shows, you know, who's paying for the load, Golden Key Express. The shipper, uh, that's the shipper. The pickup location is Ace Hardware and so forth. And so this would be one of your own loads because you're going to have your own load board that is grouped by status. So at the top, we have the first two are active. The second two are booked. And then, you know, the next batch is all dispatched. We have some loads that have already arrived at their first pickup. That's what 1P means, first pickup. We have one that has departed its first pickup. And then we have, you know, one that has been delivered, ones we're looking for the POD and so on and so forth. So this system will allow you to track the loads by load status. Okay. Now, obviously an active load is one that you want to get booked right away, right? Yes. So um, what I'll do is I'll create one from scratch. And uh, all you do, you click on this add load button right here. Mm -hmm. And then from here now, we're in the add load screen. Yeah. Now I can go ahead, if I'm going to charge a flat rate, I can type in the flat rate here uh, for the customer. And if I want to try and book this to a carrier for, let's say, 1350 that tells me right away my profit margin is 16 percent okay which is 250 dollars now if you're in specialty freight you probably charge a little bit more if you're not you may have to charge a little bit less you know it all depends right mm -hmm. now the customer now if i'm you i'm using the tms for the first time i don't have my customers in here so what do i do well i just start typing right so let's say um, it's going to be, um, I got this Yankee Candle thing on my desk here. I'll just uh, use this Yankee Candle, just an example. So let's say we land landed the Yankee Candle account. I type Y, right away it says, there are no matching customers found. Do you want to add? Yeah, I do. So I just hit yes and I say Yankee, uh, Yankee Candle. And I don't know if they're incorporated or what, I'll just put it in there. Um, now, since I'm uh, just like a one-man operation, I always want it to be my name as the sales rep and my name as the dispatcher, right? Okay. But, you know, if I if I did have another dispatcher working for me, let's say Dylan Rice, I could put his name in there. All right. So on the address, we're just going to put 125 Main Street. This is all fictitious. 11787 yes. is a zip code from where I'm from. So I'm just going to select that. Uh, the phone number, it did an auto population on that. That's fine. Email address, whatever. And I might as well put in a, uh, a thing. We'll say Tom Jones, whatever. Save. So now that Yankee Candle customer is in my system. I never have to enter in that name and address again. It will remember it going forward. Yes. Now this is the bill to, this is who's paying for the load. Yes. Now it turns out that their billing address is also the same location as the where they're shipping their goods out of. Okay. So now for the pickup, I can just type in YA and right away it shows up Yankee Candle. As soon as I type YA. So now I yes. can select them from the drop down. It pulls up all the information, Tom Jones, all that other stuff. If they gave me a pickup number, I could enter in that pickup number. Okay. Uh, if they have a certain pickup date, 
um, I can go ahead and enter that in. Let's say, you know, the 14th. And now um, I'm ready. If there's a time, I can put in, you know, first come, first serve. Yes. Or I could put in 10 to 2. Something like that. Um, and I can type beyond that, you know, um, or ASAP, right? So even though the window is small, I can yeah, type yeah. more in there. And the reason why it's so small is because we also have some EDI capability that might use up the space over here. So exactly, uh, we have that. Now, where is it going to? All right. Well, let's say it's going to we we'll be shipping this out to uh, a Home Depot. Now, I happen to have some Home Depots already entered. Okay. So I have my choice of these different Home Depots. We'll pick the one in Jericho, New York. Okay. It comes up with all the contact information. Now, this is a local delivery. So I'm going to do a same day delivery, but it has to be there by 1800. Okay. Um, now, at this point, uh, I can actually say what it is we're picking up, right? So I can predefine all my different commodities that I might be, you know, hauling, um, or I can type it on the fly. I could even say, you know, uh, 10 uh, pallets of uh, air fresheners, right? Yeah. Okay, and I can even assign a weight to it, 1,500 pounds, and... You know what? We the driver is going to have to load this on the truck, so we're going to charge uh, a lumper fee. So we'll go ahead and add that on here as a lumper. And for the driver, or well, the customer rather, we'll charge them a flat hundred bucks. It's not that large. We'll pay the carrier seventy five. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit save. So now that I hit save, it automatically assigns us a load number. So the load number automatically generates. Yes, sir. It won't never duplicate itself. Correct. Okay, okay. Yeah. And, you know, we do have the option, if you're coming off a manual system or another TMS, where you can actually change the number here, you know, to whatever number you might want it to be. Okay. Uh, but if I put in, like, 54, for example, it says, look, load number, duplicate, and system. Okay. It will not let me save that. So instead, I'm just going to go ahead and put the number that it assigned me. And, um, and so now, logically, the next step would be, all right, if we want to have a carrier haul this for us, we want to get the word out. Let's get the word out on some of the load boards out there and let them know that, you know, we have a load available. So what we can do is we can post it to a one, two, three load board, direct freight. There's a new one called load board network, which posts over 50 different load boards. Yeah, and then of course, everybody knows D18 truck, truck stop. Yes. Now, if I have freight that I want to be a little bit more um, selective in the calls that I get from carriers from the load boards, I can actually say, you know what? Don't call me unless you're going to uh, like the freight rate I'm giving. So if I click include rate, what I'm saying is I want to post this 1350. I'm saying, yes. hey, this load's available for 1350. You don't I even like have it. to call and say how much is it, how much you're paying or negotiate. It's 1350. It's what it is. Yes, I like it. I like it. Right? Um, so then when I hit save, it's going to post in real time to those load boards. How does, where did you put the information for you as the broker to provide the information to the load board along with that load? Right. So what we do is we do an integration uh, with the system. So in our integration, I think, uh, Let's see here. So this is where underneath your user profile. Okay. Because you can have different dispatches. They may want to have their own, you know, calls yeah. coming into their own office or oh, whatever. Now I see it right here. So now we give it. you the ability to configure okay. all these right here. You put the username, password, all your integration goes right on your user yes. screen. And that's how okay. you do it. Okay. So now with all that in place, let's say, okay, you know, I got my headset on. 
I'm taking calls. Yeah, we're going to book this load. Da, 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 da. Yeah, we're all happy. And so now <clears throat> I have a carrier. Now the carrier is, um, do you happen to have an MC number? Yes. You do? So, yes. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to onboard a brand new carrier. So with our carrier lookout product, you can go to the carrier screen and you can say add carrier. And now we can just put in either a DOT or an MC number and carrier mm. lookout is going to pull down all their insurance and safety information. It didn't pull mine. I tried that and it didn't pull me for some reason. And yes, it didn't because it's a separate add-on. Oh, okay. we can add it to your account. So go ahead and give me the MC number. One one seven one nine four one. One one seven one nine four one. Oh, now is this yours or somebody else's? That's mine. Okay. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and click continue. And so this is going to pull down yeah. uh, nope, quicker than you think, right? Right? Yeah, it's my wife and my name. Yeah, that's it. Now, notice one thing, is, which is actually really helpful for a freight broker, is you have this little green light right up here. Yeah. Carry a lookout uses a red light, green light, yellow light system. And what it does is it looks at the carrier's insurance and safety information. And based upon that, it will give a red, green, or yellow. Now, obviously, red means don't use them. They have expired insurance or something else bad. Yellow means, well, they don't have expired insurance, but it's not a deal breaker. We can still use them and not get hurt, you know, hopefully. But green means <laughs> all the lights are green and everything's wonderful and, and the band is blowing the horns behind and the trumpets are, are <laughs> you know. <laughs> So if we want to see more detail, we do have this carrier lookout tab right here. And you can click on that and it will actually show the different insurances with the policy numbers and the coverage and all that. Some insurance history, some BASIC scores, crash summaries and uh, some cr a crash chart. Obviously there are, there are none of those. Yeah. So, um, so that makes it easier. I mean, you don't have to sit there and type everything in and get all the insurance. So now that you have the carrier in the system, you typically want to send them an onboarding carrier packet, right? Yes. Okay. So with the load manager TMS onboarding system, you can actually set that up in your settings underneath onboard carrier setup, and you can have an, your carrier agreement right within the system. And this is a DocuSign-like setup. It is not DocuSign, but it's similar. So it's, it uses a very similar technology where you go in, you have your agreement, you place your different pieces of information that you want the user to um, you know, enter in, uh, the carrier, rather, is going to enter in. You can edit that template, put the signatures where you want it, and so forth. You can also define which are required documents that they have to upload. So if you want a W-9 and you want this required, you can mark that as a required document. And a CO, if you want a CO. Absolutely. If you want a CO, you can just click Add New, and you can say CO. And then we can mark it as required or not. I'm going to keep it not required just so it doesn't have another step we have to do, And but you'll see it. Mm -hmm. And then we could also say what type of equipment we're interested to see if they have. So we'll be prompting them to see if they have, you know, a crane in this instance, as well as all these other things that are checked. And then lastly, we can decide whether or not to prompt them if they want to add their own dispatchers into our system, any drivers, any other contacts like billing, what lanes they, they'll run for us, ELD status, and all these other things. These are all things that we can turn on and off, and these are things that the carrier will be prompted during the onboarding process. Mm -hmm. Um, now, this last one, keep carrier inactive until onboarding process is user completed and user verified.
Yes. This is more for a big company where you have a team of onboarding people and you have, you know, you want to do rights and things like that. For someone like, you know, yourself or it's you and your wife, you want to take this off. You don't need your hands tied, you know, when onboarding a carrier. So we'll keep that off. Um, and then we do suggest you keep required federal tax ID because you keep that on because load manager will produce a 1099 for you at the end of the year using the actual 1099 form. It'll print the actual form for you as well. So okay. you want to make sure you get that tax ID in there. Okay. All right. Questions so far? No, not so far. All right. So far, yeah. Just... All right, Gerard. So now, now this is a one-time setup, what I just showed you. You're not going to have to do this every time you, you know, onboard a carrier. If we pick up where we left off, we just added, you know, the carrier in the system. And um, what was the, what was the MC number again? One one seven one nine four one. Nine four one. Nine four one. Nine four one. Yeah. Four one. Okay. The state right. is Georgia. Right. So it's uh, Jocelyn Harrison, right? Yeah. All right. So now if we want to onboard and send them the signage and all that other stuff, we click this onboard uh, button here and then up we get this email. And it's, it's sending to you and it says, please click this to begin. And I'm just going to grab a copy of this URL, but I will also send it to you. We'll say copy and we'll just say send. What is that sending? That's the onboarding process? Yes. That's a welcome email to your carrier saying, hey, you know, yeah, I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to paste it into this browser right here. Now it comes up automatically with your information, but me as the carrier, if I wanna go ahead and put my cell number in, right? I can enter in my cell number. Um, I can say, yes, email me some available loads. Uh, wants to know if I have a different a factoring company. Yes. I could enter that information in, da, da, da. Okay, I'm not gonna do that, obviously, yes. because we don't want need to sit here and watch me type. Then it says, this is step one of 10. So I can hit next. Ah, federal tax ID. Okay, we gotta enter that in. And we'll hit next. Now keep in mind too, this is formatted for a cell phone. So if I'm a carrier on the go and I'm on this, I'm, I open up my email on my cell phone they're going to have this like screen that's going to be like this, right? It's a narrow screen. Mm -hmm. So notice all the information shrinks down to the size of the phone. Mm -hmm. And here it's asking me, uh, I can add a driver. So I'm going to say this is Tim Johnson. And we're going to put his phone number down because we might give him a, a dispatch, a mobile dispatch. And I'm just going to say uh, next. And uh, now I could say what lanes. I'm going to make this big again just to make it easier. This is still the onboarding process that yeah. we sent to the carrier. This is the onboarding process. So here I can say what lanes we're going to cover for, for you. So I'm going to do zone one, two, and part of three, right? And we'll go ahead and click next. What equipment do I have? Well... I had added that crane, right? During that setup that I just showed you. So we can go ahead and pick some of the things that I as a carrier, I'm gonna be able to service you with. If I wanna be paid with ACH, I could put my bank information in here. Yes. Um, if I want, now these are things you don't have to ask every carrier. Those are those check boxes that I showed you. Okay. So if this is too much, you can take some of this stuff off, right? Okay, 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 yeah. Here's the CO that you said you want to, yeah. to do. I'm gonna hit next because we didn't make a requirement, but the W9 is a requirement. So I have to click on that and I'm gonna have to pick a document as my W9. Yeah. Uh, I just happen to be in my logo folder. I'm just gonna pick this, even though it's not really a W9. And I'll hit next. 
And then now it comes up to signing the agreement. So here I'm going to click, I agree, continue. I can click the signature box. I could draw my own signature or I could type it. So I'm going to type it, Tim Johnson, and I'm going to adopt it as my signature. So I'm going to click OK. And then now my signature is on there. And that's it. I can click finish. When you come back to the actual carrier, let me refresh this. Now it says view carrier packet. So now I know that they filled out the whole thing and I can actually view the packet as it was on the day that they entered in all that information. So even if something changes, I still have everything that they entered for that day, including the agreement. Okay. Okay. I see what you're saying. Um, now I can also see where it says view attach files. Yes. If I click on that, you'll notice that I have the W9 that they uploaded. Yes. And, um, and so now the carrier's onboarded. That's it. Okay. So what do we do? We're going to go back over to our loads. We're going to pull up um, that Yankee Candle load. And we're going to go down and we're going to book it. So we're going to put in Joyce, or Jocelyn rather. Yeah. And... It's right there, the right bottom. There. And so now this is how I put the carrier on the load. It is now booked. I can select the equipment that we're using and um, it automatically changed the status to book and it put an update in the dispatch notes down here. Okay. Saying status was changed to book. I can save this. The load board posting options go away. And now um, I'm ready to give it, give them the rate confirmation. Now let's see how that looks. You click, you right. click that. Yep. So I click on that. And so this is the rate con. It shows that it's coming from your company. This would be your company name right here. That's our fictitious company, Big Apple okay. Transport. That's the broker. It's been assigned to Jocelyn Harrison, carrier as the pickup, the delivery. Now, if there's multiple picks and drops, you're gonna have the original pickup here and the final delivery here, and then you're gonna have all the picks and drops in this area down here. Okay. It shows it 10 pounds of air fresheners, what they're picking up, it shows the lumper, then it shows the delivery, the flat rate, your accessorial charge for the lumper and your total amount of fourteen twenty-five. Okay. Now, what I'm looking for is now I'm looking for the customer invoice. Okay. So, um, the customer invoice. You just click this button right here. And that's the customer in, in Yankee Candle, bill two. It shows the pickup and the drop. It shows the amount. We have $100 for the lumper. And we have the flat rate of $1,600. And then you have your total amount due of $1,700. And you email that to the customer from the, within the, the, uh, the, the software? Yes. But we skipped something really cool. What we skipped is if we use the mobile Raycon. Oh, I see that. Look at that. That's we cute. can actually send this information to the driver's cell phone Ooh. as an app. And then they can actually notify when they arrive and depart at each stop. And when they do their final delivery or they get all their proof of deliveries for each drop that they do, they could use their camera on their cell phone to take a document image and that will show up right on my screen. In, in On the inside the TMS? Inside the TMS, yeah. So for example, um, what I'll do is as a text, you have a cell number, right? 
Yes. What's what's your cell number? 678-908-2796. Okay, so I'm gonna hit send. So you should get a text. And that text is gonna have a link. It says, click the link below. Actually, it should say tap the link below since it's a text. It says click, okay, I'm there. Right. And then, so that's going to look something like what I have on my screen here, but only it's now. Yes. Right. So go ahead and just put in your name. It's not validated. It's just like a, kind of like an e-signature saying that, you know, you agree to any terms or whatever and click continue. Okay. I did that. Incidentally, did it ask you for your location? It's asking me. Right now, it's saying unable to get location. Okay. So that means because your location services are turned off. And that's fine. Um, but if it if you did have it turned on, what would happen is you would see um, in our system, you would see on the Google map your location. And I, I logged in on my computer and I turned it on. And you could see this is my location here. Yes. And this is the date, the time, it's 1148, which is exactly what it is, you know. And so that's what would happen if the driver allowed the location. Um, oh, so they can, they can use this link that you sent as a text message to actually respond to you as their process, as the move, uh, load moves along the way. That's right. So um, on your mobile phone right there, You'll notice where it says Yankee Candle Inc. To the right of that, it has an Arrive button, right? Yes. So if you tap Arrive with your finger, um, that will actually update the load status from Dispatched to Arrived. It'll, it'll, it'll do it itself into the TMS. Right. And it will also update this uh, arrival time right here accordingly. All yes. I have to do is refresh my screen to get those values that you, if you did it. Wow. So let me hit refresh. Uh, did you hit, did you tap arrived on the phone or no? Yeah, but it said, I, I don't know if it's not getting my location and my location is on. Oh, is it giving you a message that it can't do the location? Yeah, it can't get my location and my location stays on. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. I actually thought that it would um, it would still update the status even if your location was uh, was off. Yeah, my location. I don't know why I'm saying that, but my location is on. Okay. All right. So let's not get caught up okay. on that one. If you want to see it, I could do arrived on my side. Let's see. And so I did arrive. Now let me do a refresh on here, and sure enough, it's updated it to status arrived one p. Okay because that's the first stop and it's a pickup and it put the arrival time of 1150, which is correct. Now, if I go back to it and I say departed, then, and I refresh my screen again, this will set it to departed 1P and so forth. I could do the same thing with the delivery. It'll say arrived. And then when I do departed on the final delivery, instead of saying departed, it'll say delivered. So I oh, let's go ahead and do yes. that. And yes. I'll hit departed. I'll do that. 1151. So now this should show uh, delivered. Let's make sure. Yep. It says delivered. And each step of the way, it's actually documenting what the driver is doing. It's the same Wow. Way. Yeah. That's a good feature, man. What is that? Wow, man. What does that feature cost altogether? Because you don't so show me some good features. What are the additional cost of those features? Everything with the web mobile app is free. What I'm showing you right now is free. The carry on boarding and that other stuff, that does cost extra. But the whole mobile app, what I just showed you, that mobile dispatch, that is 100% free. That comes with the normal fee of the month, which is what, 79, 89 bucks Correct. a month? Correct. Correct. And how much would it be to add that onboard carrying? I like that, that sign yeah. on, because I was, was going to do it through sign requests. Right, right, right. 
Well, we have a bundle. We have the carrier onboarding um, and we have the carrier lookout. Those two products, um, they're 99 each per month, regardless of how many users. A month? Correct. And so, so if I do one right now, what would my fee be a month for my subscription? Uh, if you do, it would be uh, one, um, 179. Yeah. So I could upload my own documents, my own, own my own package inside right. that system to That's where right. they can get it and they can sign it through whatever their phone, however they want to sign it. And then it'll come back to me instead yes, of having sir. to use DocuSign or sign reports or something of that sort. Right. That's right. That's a better, that's a good deal. No, it is very good. <laughs> we have, uh, there's other systems out there that we used to integrate with that charge $200 a month per, per thing compared to our 99 a month. Um, and it wasn't as a good integration and it wasn't as robust. We have much better metrics on our platform. Well, we, we, my wife, we was with, and yeah. we, we went through, we, we did trial and we yeah. did another company trial. And then we, we watched your videos. And my wife's a nurse. And I got out of the nursing field about four years ago to go into trucking. And we seen yours as having a lot of stuff in it. And we seen the simplicity of it. So, uh, uh, it just seemed like it was a little bit easier to understand the process. Yeah, we, we hear just, that a lot. Yeah. yeah, we hear that a lot because we have a lot of everything on yeah. one screen. Yeah, yeah. You, Bob, look, you took the words right. That was the number one thing right there. You see, some of them, they have the pickup. You have to set up another screen. The delivery is another screen. Right. And when my wife seen this screen here with the pickup and the delivery, she was like, please call. It was like 3 o'clock this morning. <laughs> she was like, this is the one. That's all on one screen. I see what you mean. I say, yeah, you see how simple that is? That, that's, that was the seller for us right here, this screen. That's awesome. Well, thank <laughs> you. I, I appreciate that. You know what? And we do hear that a lot. You know, it's, um, you know, it's, well, that's great. You know, we try to keep yeah. things simple. And well, it's not you overcomplicated. It's just it's too many yeah. hoops to jump through, you know? Too many. It was just too many. You had to go through four screens on a sin to get to this, to get this comp, comp, uh, this thing processed. And yeah. we looked at a bunch of them and when we done this one, I signed on with you guys a, a couple of weeks back, but then we started into uh, uh, going through some other ones and got with them and went through them and, and, and kind of learned their process and then went back to you guys. And when we seen this page here, my wife said, look, I said, it's all on one page. You see that? I said, that's, the, that's who we need to go back to. Yeah. That's great. And that's just how it came about. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome, Gerard. That's awesome. Thanks, man. I, I appreciate your enthusiasm. I really do. Yeah, it's it's simple. It's a lot in, into it, but it, 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 it's, I mean, it's it's almost like a, a, for dummies, it, it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> now, there is a couple of things that I, I uh, didn't touch on, which I think are important. Please. So we talked about the Rabel Mo, uh, Raycon, mobile Raycon, and I put it to your phone. All you had to do is tap one thing and it, and it opened up right away, right? Yes. So what's the downside? Um, the downside is that it does not do tracking in the background, right? So yes. once the, the driver takes their phone and locks it, it's not going to track the location anymore. Um, so if you do need that for certain freight, that's really important, or you don't want to have to call the driver to find out where they are. What you can do is you can do a mobile dispatch with our mobile app. So this is the web app. And the reason why they don't have to install anything is because it opens up in a web browser. It's just a link that opens up in a web browser that's formatted for a phone. If you use the mobile app itself, where they have to, you know, click it, download from the app store and install it, then we can do the background tracking. And as an added bonus, this is really, really sweet part of this app, uh, is that it does geofencing. 
So when the driver gets within 50 yards of their stop, it will automatically trigger a load status update to arrived. And when they exit the geofence, meaning when they um, go further than 50 yards from their stop after they arrived, it updates it as departed. So there's nothing you have to do. This load status with the geofencing will automatically update to arrived and departed, arrived and departed for each stop as the driver goes to the stop, does the business, and then leaves the stop. Okay. And now, Gerard, one other thing. If you notice here, it says status, uh, status update okay. was emailed. Email. Status yeah. update was emailed. Each time the load status changes, the emails that are on this email list, which is controlled right with this email button, automatically get load status updates. So you could literally enter in a load, dispatch it to a mobile app device, and from there, you don't have to really do much of anything. So don't use the web app, use the mobile app, right? That is that is definitely better, but there is there's always downsides, right? There's two pluses and minuses yeah. to each, right? Yes. So the down, what's the downside on the uh, mobile app? Well, the downside is number one, the driver has to install it, so you have to put some terms in your carrier onboarding saying, oh, if you don't install the app and use it, we charge you fifty dollars, or if yeah. you want to do the carrot method, you say, well, if you install it, we'll pay you in two days versus you know fourteen days or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, the carrot method. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And we see it all the time, even with MacroPoint, a lot of, you know, brokers will say, hey, if you don't install MacroPoint and use that, you know, you, we charge you a fine. Um, so what's the other downside, which really isn't that big of a deal, is that we do charge $3 per load to use the mobile app because it's pinging our service every single minute. Every single minute, we're tracking where they are, and it does take resources for us to do that. Okay. So if it's not that important and you don't want to spend the three dollars, um, use the web web version, which is free. And uh, one other thing, just to be completely clear, on the onboarding process, when they do a sign, that is actually a third party process that we use, but very similar to like Adobe Sign or DocuSign. Yes. So there is a three dollar charge for that as well. And now keep in mind, you don't have to have a signature. You can do that whole onboarding process and just leave that signature field off. And then, um, you know, if you want to do it an alternative way. A lot, a lot of them I sign on with now, I have to actually print it out and sign it and then take a picture with my phone and send it back to them. I and that's fine too. That, obviously, that's an option. Yeah. You know, it all depends upon your operation, how many loads you're moving, how many if, if, if I don't do the signature, moving. If I don't do the signature, do I still have access to that? Yes. I mean, I won't, I won't eventually yes. do it, but I want, I want to, I need, I need some loads first. You need to make some money. <laughs> 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 yeah. When you're starting out, I mean, look, these things can add up, you know. Yeah, you want to make some money first, right? When you're moving a lot of loads, it makes sense because it, it saves man hours. But, you yes. know, when you're starting out, you know, you could be a little bit more conservative, you know. So you say take out the signing part, but I would still have the... Uh, the Onboarding the process, yes. I can still have that part, but not use the signing part. Correct. Where they can actually print it out and they're in it and then take pictures and send it to me. That's correct. Yeah. Or, 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 or then I have to upload it manually, right? No, no. Well, they can actually upload it into the onboarding process as a required document. They just don't have the signature and prop uh, stuff on it, right? Well, no, they can sign it. It's just, it's just something they have to either scan or take a picture of. So okay. remember, okay. instead of doing documents to be signed, right? This documents to be signed, you would just do documents to be attached. And then they have to, they sign it manually, take a picture of it, and they attach it. That's all. Okay. And attach it to the same uh, way it was sent to them. Um, no, attach it during the onboarding process, and they could even use their phone. Okay. I see what you're saying now. Yes. Makes sense. Okay. 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 All right. That. So they get the okay. email for the onboarding process, 
they go ahead, they open up the email on their phone, they tap the link to follow the screens, they take a picture, upload it, done. Okay. Okay, I see what you're saying. And then to tie it in with what you were saying was, um, let me see, Joy, let me search for Joy. Does it come up? Uh, yeah, there we go. See the search, by the way, is really forgiving. I just put in Joy for the first part of the carrier. And it found the load. And it found the load. I could put in Yank. I could have put in Justin. I could have put anything. It would find this load for us that quickly. Um, but now if they... If you did use the phone, I'm just curious, Gerard, if you go back to your phone, right, and you open up that app, do you see in the upper right-hand corner, there's a little square, a drop-down menu square, like I'm yeah. showing on my screen? Yeah, I see it. You see where it says attach photo doc? Yeah. Click on that. I did. And take a picture of a document or your dog or anything by, by you. And see if you can attach that up to uh, and load that up to the the TMS here. Yeah, uh, I have some Raycons right here. And then upload. Yeah. So this would be you, the driver, taking a picture of the proof of delivery, signed bill of lading, and uploading it to me. So they can take it, print it out, sign it, take a picture of it, and they can upload it through this through this here. That's Same right. way, That's instead correct. of using the ZocuSign. Instead well, of that, using the that goes, to, uh, yeah, absolutely. You can absolutely, you can work that, absolutely. Okay. So now if I click, now I'm back on the load, right? Right here, if I'm back, back on the load and I click on this, if you uploaded that, oh yeah, there it is, it's right here. Now I could give this a title, I can say POD, right? And then I could view it. And yeah. I could see this is what you just took a picture of, right? Yes. If I mark this as a billing document, what that means is now when I'm ready to invoice the customer, instead of printing and downloading this PDF or whatever, I can click email. And now it's going to include the invoice and the POD as attachments automatically. Okay, so the be uh, the okay, I see what you're saying now. Yeah, because he's attached, he's attached the POD, and uh, and and I could attach the original invoice for that customer, right? At the same time, so he now he out he got the invoice from me as the as the shipper, and he also has the proof of the deli delivery inside that email. That's right. Okay, and so now I can hit send, and now I've just done my invoicing. Uh, electronically yes pa paperless so now, if you were to check your email you should see that email from me and i think it's going to say from load manager test email and you should have the invoice and you should also have the proof of delivery yeah i got that but the point is, is that you're dispatching to the driver using their cell phone. The driver is using their cell phone to capture the bill of laden. Okay. And, and then they're sending it to you and then you get it automatically. So now it basically, it's tracking the load from after you dispatch it, the stops they are at, when they leave a stop, when they arrive a stop, when it's finally delivered, you get the POD. Now you're emailing the invoice and that's it. We're done. We're going to mark this as completed. Yeah, that, that's cool right there. Um, and Gerard, that's really the whole life cycle of the load from start to finish. We, okay, yeah, you did show me the Raycon. We did see the Raycon. What is the BOL report on here? It's that's, right here. It says BOL report. Yeah. And we just click on that. It'll bring over any uh, commodities from the Raycon that we put on there. We can fill in additional information if we want. And then when we're ready, we click the print BOL button right here. And then you have your bill of lading. Okay. We do have some other reports. 
A lot of time we need signatures on the rate confirmation before the load can be picked up. Yeah, so um, we actually can require them to um, to do a digital signature, not a, not one where they do the graphical signature. Um, but if you have, well, let me show you here. So um, you can define um, show terms and amount in dispatch report. So if you have that turned on, what that will do is that will uh, show the carrier the terms during the mobile dispatch, and then um, it will actually attach it to the load and include their IP address, the date and time, and the name of the person who signed for it. So what that does is, and you actually did it when you signed into the mobile app, it attaches these Raycon signatures here. And the signature is, let me zoom in a bit here. And this is technically a digital signature. You typed in Gerard yes. Morrison, right? Yes. On your mobile yes. phone? Yes. And you did that at 1147 AM. Yes. And the IP address of your computer is that. And so this counts as a digital signature. So, if you're if you're okay with that, you have assigned um, Raycon. Would that be three dollars for that signature? No, no, because it's not the. It doesn't go through our sign process. It's just a a more um, uh, common way of getting a digital signature, where so the person has to this? type the name. Like you've seen it before, they type the yeah, name. Yeah, I do it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> without having to go through the other one's yeah. a little fancier process this is a a non-fancy process but it's still legal is that in with concluding the package that i that i'm uh, i'm getting yes yes for the rate con signature? yeah we don't pay anything for this we're just capturing it ourselves so okay uh, we don't charge for stuff like that i mean look okay. we're the reason why these other things are charges is because oh, it, yeah. it costs us extra for it something like this well, nothing you know yeah well, I understand that. Is there do, do, is there any necessary uh, any need to have templates in the system or not? Only if you're working with the same shippers that do a lot of repeat loads. Okay. And so, if you do, then you can define um, a template. And a template is nothing more than having, you know, a load uh, yeah. load That's status right. that says template, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this is from Hershey. Right, this yeah. Hershey company, and we in order to create new loads from this template, we just open it up. We hit copy. Yeah, we want you know, we'll say two loads. Click OK, and now we have two brand new loads in the system: five four seven nine zero and five four seven nine one. So it automatically gave it two new load numbers. That's right. Cool. I can click on it to open it up. I can see. Okay, yep, yeah, Hershey company. It has the, um, the delivery information and pickup information. Okay. Obviously that load looks a little backwards, but you, yeah. you get the idea. Oh yeah, yeah, I got it now. Yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah, that's not that, that, this is, yeah, I can, I can really, yeah. yeah and Gerard, if you wanna see profitability for the month, for the year or anything like that, we do have our sales reports here. And with that, you can specify all different criteria or you can just hit view report. And then this will show you all the loads that you've uh, you know, completed. And it shows the, you know, your cost and your revenue and your gross margin. Um, so you oh, can- Oh, wow. Yeah, it tells you what you yeah. mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And then you go to the bottom, you could see uh, total. So you did 37 loads for the month and your average margin was 28%. So you have your gross amount of 18K for the month out of 64K and your carrier cost was 46. Oh yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah, this system is easy. Yeah, this system is a whole lot. Yeah, I can, I can see myself, yeah, learning this one a lot, a lot quicker. 
And of course, there's a whole lot of other stuff, but I mean, this is a really yeah. good, you know, starting, starting point. You can, with everything I've shown you today, you can run your yeah. day-to-day operations without any problem and all in the cloud, access it from anywhere, your home, hotel, your brother's house, you know. <laughs> Do you have a tender in here anyway? If, if I give the case, the shipper want a tender? Yeah, we do. Yes, sure. So um, when you have, we'll pull up that same load. Let's because this is a really good point here. I'm sorry about all these questions. I just, I just no, no, I love it. So if we follow the load life cycle, right? They, they just gave you a load, and it's really yeah. an active, right? Yeah. What happens is, is we recycle this invoice button here. So when I save it as an active load, the system says, oh, okay. Now they might need to do a load tender or a customer confirmation. So yeah. we click on this and now this is a customer con or customer confirmation. You know, we do con for short. So this is the load tender for the customer. So I can send him that. That's right. Okay. Cause a tender is just a confirmation for the customer. Right? Yeah. That's all That's the tender is, okay. Yeah. Just a customer. And just to show you, like if it had a load status of quote and we hit save, guess what happens to the button? It goes to a quote status. Oh, so we could put quote in here instead. That's right. Now and this that, is and, a quote. That gets and we can say this to Wow. Wow, man. I can't. I, I, boy, you did that so fast. I didn't see how you did it. <laughs> that, yeah. It's, that, it's real simple. It's just changing the load status from. Just changing the status. To quote, yeah. From quote, then you had it uh, on con. How did you switch it to con from active? You had it, uh, so if I hit save, it, now this just says a customer con. Active, okay. And okay. once I know that I have it booked and the carrier has it booked, I know at that point the customer already got their load tender. I don't need it anymore. So from booked all the way up through completed, this button is going to say. <coughs> It's going to say invoice and same thing with the rate con. Now, if I can't, if this is a canceled load and I want to be kind of thorough, I can actually say to, I can print the rate con now and I can give it to the draw, uh, the, the carry and say, look, it's canceled. See right across the front there. It says canceled. Yeah. 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 So I it like generates it. all your documentation, all your forms, everything that you need to correspond with your carriers and your customers. Okay. Okay. That, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I knew it would have been a better deal. I, I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. Yeah. Then my wife can kind of go over the video. That's why I have the questions because I know what she's going to ask. Yeah, yeah. So um, what I'll do is I'll, uh, once we're done, this recording will stop. I'll generate the video. I'll post it up and I'll send you a link to it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And I'm the dispatch and everything. So I don't, yeah, I'm not, I do all that. You're very welcome, Gerard. You're, you've been a pleasure. <laughs> and, you know, for your, for your wife, um, or this is for you too, but down here we have this little circle you can click on this circle and you could search for anything right well right away you have how to set up email how to do this how to add load numbers blah 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 you know but you can search for different things right so you know if you want to search for um i guess i don't know quickbooks right yeah i do have a quickbooks account it says quickbooks online you know this oh, yeah. shows you how to do that you know, um, so you can search for different things and get okay. help on our, you know, knowledge base, uh, you know, articles, step by step on how to do different things, you know, related articles, driver settlements, you know, customer portal overview, you know, so there's, there's some good self help built into the system. I do need that, uh, that carrier setup though, that, uh, what do you call that again? That, uh, carrier one? lookout. Yeah, yeah. I want to add that to the account. I'm getting onboarding. Carry, onboarding carry due diligence, which is the carrier lookout. And You're getting the carrier out. onboarding, which is, you know, all the required documents. And if you want to have them sign, you can have them sign. It gets their carrier lanes and all that other stuff. 
Okay. Um, and then you have the uh, mobile web dispatch, which is free, including the camera with the uploads. Um, optionally, you could use the mobile dispatch um, if you want on demand, whenever you want. Um, and everything else, I mean, really, you're getting everything. Okay. Well, the TMS, man, it makes life easier, man. It really does. It does. It does. <laughs> You know what? It really does allow you to focus on, you know, getting those loads and yeah. managing them and doing all the other stuff that's involved. <laughs> yeah, it makes life easier. I got to have it. So, yeah, set me up with everything. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for this. You're very this welcome. Very helpful. Anytime. We're here for you. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Right, right. Now, I hope you like that demo, but believe it or not, there's a lot more that we have to offer. We didn't cover things like when you're first starting out, how to import all of your loads and carriers and customers from another system. Uh, also, if you're getting emails from shippers with loads that you want, that they want you to cover, um, how our smart import can take uh, just a goblet of text in any format and make sense out of it and port it as fresh loads, which you can then post to load boards. Um, we also have the ability to integrate with QuickBooks or Microsoft Dynamics. And then we also have multi-office support. If you're building a large brokerage and you have reps and dispatchers that you want to manage and allow them to see only certain things that you want to see, we have those features too. And we also do customizations. So look for some of our other videos to cover these other great and exciting topics. Thanks.